Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press and I have with me Dave Ridley from UK and Ireland. We are here today to talk about this new unit here. This is the Flex System carrier grade chassis. This is the second chassis in the series for Flex System. The first one, the Enterprise grade chassis. Right, Dave? That's right, yeah. And how, what, how do the two compare? Yeah, so what we've done is we've, uh, we've based this on the, on the design of the Enterprise chassis, but we've had to ruggedize it, uh, make it NEBS and Etsy compliant, and change it in some ways so that we can actually get extra cooling that's needed for the uh, NEBS and Etsy certifications. So what you'll see here is that we've got the normal, what we would say, 10U chassis size here from a flex chassis, and we have an additional 1U down the bottom here. And this is actually an air inlet to enable us to take extra air into the chassis. So this chassis is called the carrier grade chassis. That's what, right. Why, why is that? Why, what's, what's the big deal about this? versus the existing chassis? So the chassis is designed for uh, customers that uh, work in a telco environment. Uh, it typically be used for cloud or uh, data infrastructure. And it would be deployed out as um, central offices, so uh, in locations perhaps like a, a telephone exchange or a switching center, uh, in the middle of nowhere perhaps. Um, and it's designed to be uh, installed and operated in that environment. And those environments typically can be quite harsh. Uh, and so. What we do is we put the chassis through uh, NEBS compliance and EDSI compliance, that's the Network Equipment Building uh, System, uh, or EDSI, which is the European uh, standard for telecoms. Uh, and what we do here is we, uh, we've made the system uh, adhere to those standards and to be able to operate uh, outside of the normal sort of temperatures that you would find in a, in a general data center. So the chassis itself is ASHRAE 4 class, which means it can operate normally up to 45 degrees centigrade. Uh, but what we also have is the ability to run to 55 degrees for a limited excursion. In fact, it's for four days the, the chassis can run at 55 degrees centigrade. And so of course that, that means that if, if the unit, for example, is in a, in a CO yep. and the air conditioning unit fails or um, goes in operative for, for on, like on a Friday afternoon, yeah. um, or it's you know, several hundred miles away from the repair center, this system is designed to run at, at 55 degrees, up to 55 degrees for up to four days, to give the, the engineers time to get to the system and repair it. That's right, yeah, it's up to 96 hours. So uh, you know, the engineers can then fix it, so if it, if it fails, say, on a Friday night, runs over the weekend, Monday it can be fixed. Right. So now, this, you said the unit has this extra 1U cooling area, um, what's that for? Okay, so what that's for, and if I actually take this off, you Popping can see the there. difference here. Um, this is an early unit pre-production, so it may look a little bit different on the, on the final design when we, ha we have it, extra bits added. Um, but what this actually is, is it's taking in airflow. So you'll we see in here, there's yeah. a filter and an air filter. And in fact, um, the system has and comes as standard with two air filters, and I'll describe those in, in a little while. We'll show the other air filter. But this one U is designed to take uh, clean, cool air from the front of the chassis to the rear and we'll show you in fact where it uh, presents the airflow and, and how it, and it is designed to cool the uh, uh, switches and modules that are put in the back of the chassis more efficiently. Right. So, yep, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the, the cooling when we spin the when unit around. When we spin around. the unit around, yeah. yeah. So what else is on the front? We have uh, bays for, for up to 14 compute nodes. Yep. Yeah, just like the um, Enterprise chassis. Standard compute nodes, uh, this is a Flex System M5. Yep. So the, the carrier grade chassis, uh, as part of the NEBS testing, they'll be testing a, a, a set of components, such as the X240 M5, um, testing them for uh, temperature ranges and uh, rugged, rugged, uh, ruggedization, ruggedization um, yep. uh, as part of that um, approval process. That's right. So one of the, some of the additional tests that we have to do in terms of ruggedness is to ensure that the system can operate in a, uh, a zone four earthquake zone. Um, so there's vibration testing, temperature testing, uh, electromagnetic testing, all sorts of testing that takes place as part of the NEB standard and the Etsy standard. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, uh, as I said, it's a standard, um, or pretty standard chassis that we've got here. Um, so we have the normal airflow that comes in at the top of the chassis here and, and the bottom of the Addition, chassis, yeah. and then the additional airflow for the, uh, for the carrier grade chassis. And of chassis. course, each of, the, each of the nodes has um, air ventilation holes as well to, to allow fresh air to go through the compute nodes. That's right, yeah. yeah. So we, um, we'll show yeah. you, in fact, in a minute how that, how that works. Yeah. Um, the design itself is, is um, it's quite interesting actually um, because it's uh, it's actually very rugged uh, in itself 
Take and so yeah. the standard Enterprise chassis that we built really did you know, have quite a, a, a strong design, uh, a die cast front chassis here uh, to enable us to ship the system with it fully loaded. So we can have multiple uh, servers in here and the system can be shipped with those uh, uh, nodes or servers installed within the, the chassis. Uh, and, and these devices uh, on, the, uh, on our, uh, our enterprise chassis can actually be removed um, yeah, to provide yep. other yep. Uh, capabilities. Now, at the, at the front of the system, this is the carrier grade chassis, um, NEBS compliance requires um, special air, fil air filtering. So um, as part of that is an air filter that goes on the front of the unit um, like so. So you can see when it's installed, oops, that, that's how, so the whole front of, that's whole, the, whole front of, the, of the chassis um, ha has filters on it, including the one U at the bottom, uh, to ensure that um, filtered air goes through. Now, Dave, how does how does the filter come off? Yeah, so one of the things with filters is, of course, they they can uh, they're designed to track dust. So you do need to replace the filters um, or, or clean them, uh, and we can remove this part here, and then just remove the filter, right? And replace the filter yep. with a new one, and just pop the, the metal tr cover back in again. Very very simple to do. Right. Very easy, very fast, and then just clip it back on the front again. Of course, you could do that um, uh, very simply. Yep. And the same with the other filter as well. So the filter that uh, uh, goes in with one U underneath, uh, we just remove this uh, this cover here, uh, and then we pull yep, the filter right. out here, so the filter can be removed. Yeah. It's very simple. And then very put that back in again. And then this just goes back in, like this, back there, like and that. And then and the cover goes on top. Yeah. This one's not. This is a pre-production model. So look, what what you'll get when the GA system is a little bit different looking. Yeah. Okay. All right. Should we uh, swing around the back? Yeah. Okay. Let's spin around and look at the the back end. Okay. Go around yeah. that way. <laughs> so, if you're familiar with the the Enterprise chassis, um, the, a lot of the components will look very, very familiar to you. Um, really, the only difference is the the one U again at, at, that's at the at the bottom of the of the chassis. So, Dave, what are the components here? Yeah, so what we've got here, first of all, are power supplies. We have up to six power supplies. Um, on the NEBS compliant model, we're looking at 48 volt DC, min or negative. Minus, minus 48 negative volt, yeah. or minus 48 volt DC. Um, that's connected in with the, this connector here. There's a cable that comes off, uh, and that would connect into the DC power sources. Mm -hmm. There's also uh, studs here for mounting for earthing as well. Uh, and these are the standard form factor uh, power supplies that uh, you'd be familiar with if you're working with uh, the Enterprise chassis already. So we have up to six of those. Uh, that provides redundancy and capability, and you only scale up as you need to. So you only put in as many power supplies as you need to for the load that you've got inside. The number of switches, the number yeah. of compute nodes. Yeah, exactly. So that's the, uh, that's the power supplies. So moving on from that, we've also got the cooling, which we were mentioning earlier on, and that's these uh, uh, fan assemblies here. So these are uh, either 40 millimeter fans for a start, so let's have a look at these. This is a little fan pack that can be removed. Uh, twin pairs of counter-rotating fans in there for redundancy. And we also have uh, a number of 80mm uh, fan packs, which are uh, uh, basically pairs of fans, two fans together, uh, inside this pack uh, with a, what we call a PSOC in there. So it's an intelligent fan assembly. Uh, and on the back of the system here, you'll see that there's an electromagnetic screen here that provides a laminar airflow, smooth airflow out the back. So this is a very efficient uh, cooling system. Um, so up to 10 of those, up to 10 of the 80 mil fans, uh, depending again, depending on the load requirements you have, um, and uh, two of the 40 yeah. mil fans. So I think it's eight. It's oh, eight. Did I say 10? Yeah, it's, it's actually eight. eight. Sorry, yeah. I can't count. So eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, so eight of those and, and two of these. These are standard uh, standard system, uh, right? and they're installed as standard. You, you, these are not yep. optional. So we also have, what are these, these switches? Yep, so, so these, these are switches, and we've got uh, a mixture in here of, uh, of 10 gig switches and also uh, 16 gig fiber channel. Right. And we also have... Uh, so you install them in uh, either singles or pairs. So we've got two... Um, of the 10 gig Ethernet switches in, in bays one and two, and we have currently we have one uh, 16 gig fiber switch, uh, but you could have two of those, and you have two for redundancy purposes. Um, and then further on the on the right side, uh, two CMMs, one or two CMMs. Um, uh, these are the chassis management modules. 
Yep, chassis management module. Chassis management module communicates via the midplane to pretty much all the devices around the system. So there's an internal network that communicates around, plus there's also an I2C bus that talks to all the componentry on the system. So really this is the heart of the system. Yes. And uh, Of course you can see that we're, we're in a lab, that's why it says prototype. Yes. Yeah. Okay, the other thing uh, that we didn't describe and didn't show you is actually what happens when you plug these switches in uh, and how they are called. So let's have a look at that because it's relevant to talking for the airflow that we've, been, uh, that we've been describing. So first of all, you'll see there's apertures at the top and there's also an aperture at the bottom of this switch. And these are pre-production switches as you can see. Um, okay, so the airflow comes from the front of the chassis and it enters a switch under here at the bottom of the switch. It flows through the switch and comes out the top, aperture at the switch, and then through this fan assembly, which is installed in the chassis here. So in the, in the carrier grade chassis, where does the air actually come from to come into the switch? Well, let me show you that. Right. So, so what, what have we got? We're at the back of the chassis right now, right? Yeah, so what we've done here is we've removed the, uh, the chassis uh, shuttle, which contains all of the power supplies, fans, cooling, etc. And we're looking inside, and we wouldn't normally do, do this, uh, but we thought we'd show you this so you can actually see where the apertures are. Uh, so down here is where the airflow comes in. Right, so un underneath this is the 1U that we talked about at the beginning, uh, the additional 1U for the carrier grade chassis. Um, so the air comes in from the front of that, that 1U opening and comes up through these holes, right? That's correct, yeah, and then enters the switch modules right, so or I.O. modules. The air is coming up through those gaps, the fresh air, through the switches, and then out through the addition of those 40mm um, fans at the back. That's right. right. And while we're here, we might as well look at what components or, uh, or what uh, sockets and, uh, and, and apertures there are here on this midplane. Because this is actually the midplane of the chassis that uh, everything communicates through. Um, and a few little points here, we've got the power supply connectors here. So you can see there's six of those. And you also see some connectors here, each one of these for the uh, switches. Uh, and then over here, we have the chassis management connectors as well. And then the final thing I'll show you is these apertures here, when we install a node in the front of the system, it opens the aperture to allow airflow through. So what that means is the chassis is really efficient because when there's no nodes installed, there is no airflow being so drawn through the chassis. So yeah. it's airtight and uh, we're not wasting energy drawing uh, airflow through to cool nothing, basically. So while we're here, let's also talk about the rail kit, shall we? Yeah, sure. So these are the same rails that are used on the Flex System Enterprise chassis, used on the carrier grade chassis. Um, and the guys have done a really good job of designing this. So it's really simple to install and can, uh, it can be done with one hand, basically. So in fact, let's show you how it's done um, yeah. and how simple it is to climb. Right. So the idea is that you can put this in uh, very simply without needing tools. Nice and quick. That quick. Yeah, yeah. All right, so there you have it. This is the, uh, the flex system carrier grade chassis. We've described the uh, ins and outs of the chassis. Hope you found the video useful. Dave, thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Yep, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Cheers.